Now, most of the time when you are dealing with magnetic force, you won't be dealing with a single charge. I mean, there are experimental situations where you do, but like we did this demo here, you are not really dealing with a single charge. You are dealing with a current that's flowing in a wire, um, with some length, with some extent of magnetic field. So let me write down an expression that's useful in a case like this. So you can look at the textbook for how you get to the second expression from the first one. So the magnetic force on a wire, on a current carrying wire, is going to be, it's going to be proportional to how much current is flowing. That's why here, if I you know, change this setup so that, oh, I don't know how I do it. Let me do it this way. Uh, let me turn down this knob so that uh, it doesn't let as much current flow. So when the current is less, uh, right now about a half as much as what it was before, and when I set it up, now the magnetic force isn't as much. It doesn't move as much. Like it barely moved a little bit, right? So the magnetic force is going to be proportional to current. So um, here will be current. And you need some kind of quantity that'll give you uh, both the magnitude and the sense of direction. And um, I will write down the expression first, then I'll draw a figure to define the terms. Uh, it'll be L, length of the wire as a vector, cross uh, magnetic field. So uh, I should really draw a figure to especially define this L, because we are not used to dealing with the wire as a vector. Um, it's something we define specifically for this. So let's say you have magnetic field pointing upward like last time. And let's say I have a current carrying wire which is um, placed in this space. Let's say um, going this way. Then the vector L, it's related to the length of the wire, obviously. So if the wire is, let's say, so if you are looking at, oh, I guess um, we can kind of imagine this um, to simplify it. So we can imagine that uh, this wire is part of some loop or something, and there's a wire coming in into the board, and then it turns here, and current starts flowing this way. And then let's say, it, then it turns here, and then it comes out of the board again. Yeah. So if you are inter if you are interested, in, let's say force on magnetic force on this segment of wire that you see, in that case the magnitude of L is the length L, as you would have guessed. That's the magnitude of L, and the direction is well, um, it, this is the direction of L. So if it, if it, uh, current is in the direction I drew, then the vector L would look exactly like this. Going from this end, along the direction of the wire, aligned with the direction of the wire, in the same direction as the current. So this would be my vector L. It's kind of intuitive, I hope, that nothing I'm saying here is counterintuitive. But if you want to be you know, precise and make sure um, that it's unambiguous, that's how you would define L, you know, the same length as the actual length of the wire, and pointed along the wire so that it's going with the current, not the other way. Uh, yeah. So, and um, yeah, yeah, I won't do the derivation since that'll take precious time and I won't have uh, enough time to go over maybe a couple examples today. But, yeah, if you want to see where this comes from, you can look in the textbook. And the way you would do is you express this current in terms of the charge density of the things flowing. And you can look at it in the textbook. Yeah. What force is this again? Is this, it the magnetic force on the wire? Yeah. So this is the force that you are seeing here. Yeah. So I mean, this wire moves for some reason, right? So here, um, the length of the wire you would use is the length that's within the magnetic field. Yeah. But yeah. So magnetic field, magnetic force. Um, yeah, on wire <laughs> by magnet. So um, I guess maybe a, a better, the more common term is magnetic force on current carrying wire. Because uh, it's not the these two that 
says if there's a magnetic force or not, it's that times the current that says that there's magnetic force. That's actually one of the reasons that this is kind of hard to demonstrate in class because you need a fair amount of current to even produce tiny amount of force you see. And generating current greater than three ampere kind of takes big power supply and that I don't have. Yeah. Okay, I think we have enough time for some of the examples I want you to go through. So let me go over this example of loop of current so that uh, we have some uh, context for thinking about different interactions between magnetic field and, well, current that we are going to look at. So this is the setup that I want you to imagine. I guess um, if you want to see a physical prop, then this is sort of what you should imagine. I have this magnet sitting here. Imagine it's a much bigger magnet that's producing magnetic field pointing up. And what I could have is a current carrying loop, as in this is a loop, right? And I could uh, you know, cut off a section of it, attach a battery there, so there's a current that's flowing around in a loop. Now, if I place this loop over that magnetic field, what kind of interaction do you expect to see between this loop and the magnetic field? That's the question. You are wondering if it's rhetorical or not. <laughs> OK, so you might expect there to be net force on this loop. Let's carefully analyze that. So um, for the purpose of drawing it here, I'm going to make it a rectangular loop. It's easier to draw that way. So let's say I've been using blue color for magnetic field. So um, call this uh, current carrying loop in magnetic field. So let's just take this as an example. Magnetic field points upward. And I'm going to stipulate that this is a uniform magnetic field. That it's a uniform magnetic field. It's the same strength of the magnetic field all the way throughout. And we'll talk about later how you might make magnetic fields like that. Uh, for the loop that I was holding up, um, I guess this is how you can draw it. Um, so I'll have to draw it in four segments. So there's a segment one, the front segment. Let's say current is flowing from left to right there. So call that front segment one. After current flows from left to right, then there's a loop that goes into the board, or there's a segment that goes into the board that continues to carry the current. So this is segment two. And then on this side, there's a, a section that's carrying the current from right to left. So that would be segment three. And then there's a final segment that brings it back to the starting point. Segment that's coming out of the board. Segment four. Good. So it's an exercise on, all right, uh, let's say it's a, it's a square loop. In that case, is everyone convinced that the magnitude of magnetic force will be the same on each one of these segments? If it's a square loop? Yes? All right, let's make it square loop. So it's an exercise on figuring out the directions of magnetic force so that we can see what the net force on the entire loop is. So loop one, what is the direction of magnetic force? Looking at this, L probably goes left to right. So what's the direction? Mm, L cross, yeah, out of the board. <laughs> um, oh, so I need to, let me draw a free body diagram here. So free body diagram, uh, this is my loop. So the force that's due to one will be out of the board. So there's force coming out of the board due to on the segment one. Uh, what about force on segment two? Is it in the plane, out of the plane, into the plane, in the plane? In the plane, what direction? Pointing to right, right? Yeah. 
So the force on the segment two is pointing to right. What about force on segment three? Yeah, into the board and close B. So, all right, so this is the force on segment three. What about uh, force on segment four? To the left, right? Yeah, so this is on segment four. So this should be the side view and so, you know, with the magnetism, once again, it's three-dimensional. It's hard to represent it um, clearly in two-dimensional picture. So if I drew one more picture that's a free body diagram of the top view, as in you imagine going over here and looking down from above, from the top view, this would be the free body diagram. One, three, two, so what do you think of the net forces? Zero. Oh, does it sound right? That if I have a current, uh, current carrying loop here, that it doesn't interact with the magnetic field, that it has net zero force? It might not um, strike you as intuitive, especially if you know anything about a motor. So you're going to, we are going to look at motor later on in the semester. All that a motor is, is a current carrying loop placed within the magnetic field and somehow it rotates. I think I actually oriented this kind of wrong for that. Let me imagine this loop turned around. So yeah, this is in the part that sometimes called dead zone. So let me imagine it turned around this way. So that now I'm still dealing with the same loop, but it's oriented around. So let's say, um, let me do it in different color, red. So if the loop is oriented around, so the segment one becomes this segment. Segment two, well, it's still going into the board. Segment three brings it back down. And segment four is still coming out of the board. All right, let me draw that. Um, let me draw the, um, uh, yeah, let's draw it here um, in just in red. So four so on segment one. Any force on segment one? No, because L is parallel to B, so zero force, or sine theta is zero. And the same thing for three, so one and three are zero. Uh, what is the force on segment two? Yeah, still the same as what you had before. Let me draw it here, actually. So force on segment two points to right. This is force on two. What about force on segment, oops, four? Left, the same as before. Um, so if we are looking at net force, has anything changed? In terms of net force, net force is still zero. This will balance out this. But something has changed. So that if I place a loop this way and let go, it'll start to move. How does it move? Yeah, it starts to rotate. So this is an example of a torque on a current carrying loop due to a uniform magnetic field. So the result here is that there is a torque on a current carrying loop. Due to uniform magnetic field. And even though we did this for a you know, square shape, turns out that if it's a loop of any kind, um, as long as you're dealing with a uniform magnetic field, net force will always be zero. As long as you're dealing with a uniform magnetic field, your net force will be zero. But depending on the orientation, sometimes you will get a situation where net torque is not zero. So, so this is the basis of the motor, that actually there's a lab for motors uh, a little bit down the line. You're going to look at that. Um, but so what it takes to have a non-zero net force on a current carrying loop is to have a non-uniform magnetic field. And um, I think you might have some homework exercise actually based on that where there's a current carrying loop and there's a net force on it due to magnetic field because a portion of the loop is in the magnetic field and a portion is not. In that case, you can have a net force. Okay. 
All right, so that's uh, one example I want you to, to start seeing because it's a uh, basis of a physical picture that you'll see more.